With the injury to Randy Gregory and him going on short-term injured reserve, it is now time for Denver Broncos rookie edge rusher Nick Bonito to shine to get his opportunity to showcase why the Broncos drafted him and to make an impact due to injuries. Plus, we hear a little bit from Ross Jackson of Locked On Saints on Latavius Murray, what he will bring to the Denver Broncos, and we also talk about whether or not Kendall Hinton, could he be called up to the active roster for the remainder of the season? We dive into that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos. You are Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for taking time out of your day to make Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format or whether you watch us on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. Mile high salute. Please do us a favor. Hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content coverage, and more from the south stands to the end zone. I'm your host as always Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Joined alongside as always by my co-host Sarah Benjamin He's the site expert, predominantlyorange.com, where we provide daily coverage of all things Denver Broncos news, content coverage, and more here. Locked on Broncos. Sarah, my friend, uh, you know, obviously injuries have been a, a huge damper this week on the Broncos. We've talked about the loss of Javante Williams kind of in depth here. We know that now Randy Gregory will go on short term injured reserve. I know we'll address that a little bit later, but you know what? We got to talk about a Broncos rookie who has a chance now to step up and to make an impact and I think to kind of go through and get valuable reps here early on, and that's going to be Nick Benito. That's right, the Broncos' top pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. Cody, we haven't seen a ton of him through the first month of the season, but now here as we get into October, maybe a little bit of uh, nightmares being brought to your opposing quarterback each week by Nick Benito. We know that he can bring that speed off the edge. We know that he can hurry up a quarterback's rhythm. Now we got to see it quickly, right? We got to see it against Matt Ryan, Cody, who has nine fumbles this season, five interceptions obviously his process has you know been sped up quite a bit through the first few weeks by the Colts opponents so Nick Benito's got a good matchup to kind of get his feet wet in the NFL I know he's played a little bit but now he's going to be playing a very prominent role we've seen Baron Browning playing a pretty prominent role in the defense as kind of that first guy off the bench now that role is shifting to Nick Benito it's a big week for him against the Colts. I mean, spot on there right now. While Bradley Chubb and Baron Browning will get the starting opportunity to get after the quarterback, I mean, Nick Benito is still going to have a very important role, Sarah, as you mentioned, because those guys can't be on the field the entire game. They're going to have to keep guys in. And right now, I mean, outside of Randy Gregory, they're still banged up. Jonathan Cooper still dealing with the hamstring. Aaron Patrick, concussion protocol. As you mentioned in yesterday's episode, Lockdown Broncos, they may have to elevate a little bit of Jonathan Congo this week, but we will see a little bit more of Nick Benito. Now, I, th- Sarah, I think this is also a great example, right? Because I think everyone was wondering, well, the Broncos didn't have a first round pick. You know, they had a late, late second round pick in this previous NFL draft. You didn't necessarily need to play Nick Benito right away, right? I mean, it was good to have rotation, good to have options there. Broncos have depth, pass rushing waves, as Nathaniel Hackett would say. Injuries, I'd say, is a great example why the Broncos drafted him. And not to mention, Bradley Chubb's contract extension is still kind of pending here. Nick Benito was a big reason why the Broncos brought him in. And I think it's so key right there. This is why the Broncos drafted him to step up. Now, I do want to say, like, we've touched on his athleticism and and the traits that he has. It's there. We know that he kind of went through some ups and downs in the preseason where he said, you know, he's just trying to figure out how to find his footing. And he really emerged in that, that third and final preseason game against the Vikings. Okay, we're like, hey. This Nick Benito kid, he's going to be pretty special. I think, Sarah, reps are going to be very valuable for Nick Benito, regardless if he has success or if he struggles. And I think it's important. If he struggles, Broncos country, you have to be patient with a young player like this. You do. You absolutely do, especially when it comes to the full you know, arsenal of what it takes to be an edge player in the NFL. And oddly enough, Cody, not that Randy Gregory is bad at this, but I think the Broncos are a little bit stronger off the edge in the running game with Baron Browning. I think he's, he kind of excels in that area. It's an underrated area of his game. And that's something that I think Nick Benito is going to have to come in and do well. Also, you know, if, if Jonathan Taylor is going to play in this game for the Colts and as of, you know, we're recording this Tuesday, as of Tuesday, his status is still very much in question he's going to have to set the edge regardless of who's playing because the Colts are going to try to establish that identity on the ground game. So it's not only going to be, all right, Nick, you're coming in as sort of the 
three-point specialist, so to speak, to come rush the quarterback on third down. No, you're going to have to play on all three downs in rotation. So maybe the Broncos start by getting his feet wet on third down, Cody, but this is exactly like you mentioned. This is why they drafted him. They drafted him to be able to come in at any point during the season and make an impact. And yes, he was a second, late second round pick, but there people have to remember there were a lot of times over the course of the 2021 college football season that people were talking up Nick Benito as a first round pass rusher. A lot of people were surprised that he lasted to where he did on day two. So although he was picked number what 64 overall or 63 or 64, whatever it was, 64 from the Rams, although he's picked number 64 overall, you're kind of anticipating, you know, more so like he's your top pick, if that makes sense. Sense. in terms of just the way you're approaching this it's not just well he's a late second round pick no it's this guy's your top draft pick you expect him to come in in a situation like this and produce at a high level well you know it's going to be a very big test short week turnaround here the indianapolis colts come to town on thursday night football tomorrow's episode locked on brock's we're also going to have you covered with a crossover thursday with the host of the locked on colts podcast zach hicks we'll break that down on tomorrow's episode but coming up here in just a moment we're going to be joined by Locked On Saints host Ross Jackson, who joined me to talk a little bit about Latavius Murray, what he brings to the table for the Denver Broncos. You get to that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about LinkedIn, the sponsor of today's episode, Locked On Broncos. And as you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. And did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. As we continue on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, we're going to dive into a conversation with Lockdown Saints host Ross Jackson. But real quick, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format or whether you watch us on YouTube. Thank you so much. Go ahead, do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news content coverage every day, all year long. Let's bring on the man of the hour here, Lockdown Saints host Ross Jackson, my partner in crime. As always, you can catch Catch him every single day, Monday through Friday, breaking down all things New Orleans Saints. So if you're a Saints fan that stumbled upon this channel and you're watching Ross Jackson, we, you know, thank you for coming into the show here. But obviously some big news, Ross, as the Broncos signed running back Latavius Murray off of the Saints practice squad, especially considering the injury to Javante Williams. The first question I have for you essentially is, what does Latavius Murray bring to an offense? Yeah, I think the thing that I love most about Latavius Murray is that he's, what, six foot three? I mean, yeah. he's a big guy and so he is somebody that gives you a little bit of versatility where you can utilize him between the tackles but also utilize him uh in the passing game as well he's somebody that has experience lining up in the slot the saints even played around with having him at wide receiver a couple of times all throughout practices and things like that 2019 2020 but this is a guy that always falls forward always fights for more yardage and just doesn't put the ball on the ground he's not, he's not that guy and so if you're looking for somebody that you know, you're going to be able to rely on it. There's a ball security. And if you want a guy that can literally just fall forward and pick you up two yards, Latavius Murray is that guy. Well, I think that's a big relief to everybody in Broncos country, right? Because the Javante Williams injury was a huge blow for them, losing him for the entire season. But Melvin Gordon has struggled so far this season through four games. He's had four fumbles. And every right. single game so far this season, that's definitely one concern. To my understanding, he hasn't had a fumble since 2018 like he's had one fumble yeah. in the span since 2018 and he's never lost one in that span as well while having you know a high workload some of the most carries so far and I remember specifically Ross you and I had crossed over an episode in 2020 this was the Kendall Hinton game the Hall of Fame quarterback yeah. game story here Latavius Murray ran all over the Denver Broncos he had 20 plus carries for over 120 yards two touchdowns what does a guy like him bring to you because he's kind of fallen back into being that he was on the practice squad what what was the situation with Murray that had him on the Saints practice squad and not on the active roster? 
Yeah, it was a little bit surprising just to know that Latavius Murray wasn't on an active roster across the NFL, period. I mean, even with his production last year with the Baltimore Ravens, short wasn't show-stopping, but the guy found the end zone a lot, and that's something that you value in our running back, somebody that can score and help you close out some of those drives, particularly when you get into the red zone. We saw how costly that could be in this week's Monday night football game for the Los Angeles Rams, for instance, who couldn't finish those drives in the red zone. And so he gives you uh, one of those guys that can, that can be that person. And I think the, the situation that led to him not being on the active roster is that for the new Orleans saints, he was kind of a guy that they brought in to kind of help while Alvin Kamara was dealing with his injury. He's dealing with a rib injury right now. Seems that it's not a serious thing that's going to be long lasting, but they needed another running back because in this New Orleans Saints offense, you don't replace Alvin Kamara one to one, you replace him with the committee. So they wanted that committee and that partnership next to Mark Ingram. So they're able to get that for the game that they needed him. And then after that, you know, they, they offered him a contract to keep him around after he had that really nice performance in London. But it wasn't an end all be all situation, considering that he still would have been behind guys like Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram in the Saints offense. So now he gets to take over kind of with Javante's injury, a little bit more prominent role. Now, I think his right. role and maybe if he's going to be RB1, RB2, it remains to be determined. We'll find out more if he plays on Thursday night, kind of leading up to kickoff, if that's the case. But a short turnaround for him, kind of going to your last point that you had mentioned there. Just coming off of a game in London, I know you just came back from that game as well. Unfortunately, the Saints lost in that game, but I think the bigger question here, Ross, what was it that he did well that gave the Saints a chance to maybe beat the Vikings in London? I mean, look, he he found the end zone in this game, and that's something that these New Orleans Saints running backs have had some trouble doing. They've got you know a couple of fumbles now between Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram, and Alvin Kamara hasn't found the end zone and so I think that you know that's one of the big things that you got from Latavius Murray and when he found the end zone it wasn't because the road was paved for him in the red zone he fought through he had to fight through contact met at the line of scrimmage ended up pushing to the left side outstretching the ball with his left hand to be able to cross the plane and then score that touchdown so I think that Latavius Murray is a fighter he's one of those guys that's going to be able to pick you up yards after contact so even if you're not getting the best protection up front you're not moving or resetting the line of scrimmage which every nfl offensive line wants to do uh you know when it comes to the run game he's still somebody that can fight through and pick up yardage for you keep the legs churning and then keep picking up those yards after contact he's, he's really really good in that department which makes him a guy that can fit in any scheme well and that could really help the broncos they've really been struggling with that some issues on continuity on the right side of the offensive line haven't been able to find holes to run through i think a big body back like him up now now, earlier, you alluded to the fact that he can help you as a receiver. One of the bigger things, too, here, can he be an asset as well in pass protection? What is he like in that system? I think that he probably falls behind Mark Ingram, just putting it in, in perspective of where the Saints were with this decision, because I do think that this is a part of why the Saints never added him to the active roster, even though they made the offer after his performance. I think you put him under Mark Ingram, who's one of the better pass protectors in the NFL at the position, at least at his age, but then he was better than a guy like Alvin Kamara. So I think you might want to put him probably in the just above average maybe class of guys that can assist in the backfield as a pass protector. He's certainly done it before. He does a good job of recognizing where blitzes are coming from in the second level. He fills his assignments really well. He knows what his gaps are. He knows what he's supposed to do. Sometimes he makes the block. Sometimes he doesn't. So he could be a little bit hit or miss there, but certainly not a guy that's ever going to get overpowered. At six foot three, 200 plus pounds, he's willing to take on all of that contact and it translates as a pass protector. Broncos country, we just got a lot of great insight from Ross Jackson, host of the Lockdown Saints podcast. You can catch him there Monday through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as well as he provides coverage in season of the New Orleans Saints. A lot of great insight there. Let us know in the YouTube comment section down below what you thought of what Ross had to say about what Latavius Murray brings to this Broncos offense. But coming up here in just a moment, Sarah Bettinger and myself, we're going to analyze some of the Broncos roster moves, including whether or not they could bring Kendall Hinton up to the active roster for the rest of the season after his elevations have already cleared through four weeks of the NFL season. We'll do that coming up here in just a moment. But before we get into all that action, let me tell you about BetOnline.net, the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting information this season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every single game that you can think of here. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every single sport out there. They're the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your favorite games, events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and even golf. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, where the game starts. 
Obviously, a lot of great insight from Lockdown Saints host Ross Jackson on the Broncos newest edition of Latavius Murray. It is still unclear at this point whether or not he will play on Thursday night. That's something that Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett told us at Tuesday's media availability. It's something they are going to continue to work through, and we'll see if we see him dress up on Thursday. That's going to be one of the things to watch. I know we're looking forward to once we get to Thursday night football here, sir. But as we continue on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, let's talk about some of the roster moves that this football team has made. Sarah, it was official on Tuesday. The Broncos placed Javante Williams on season-ending injured reserve. Obviously a big blow. We'll find out a little bit more when he has surgery. And once it's clear, I think we'll get an initial timeline, time frame as to maybe when he can return, considering some of the complications of the injury itself. So that's going to be something I know Broncos country wants to find out a little bit. Randy Gregory, though, outside linebacker placed on short-term injured reserve, Sarah, which, you know, considering the knee, considering the replay of it and how it looked initially, the initial fear was that it could have been a potentially significant injury. But right now, just a meniscus, they'll go in, they'll do a scope, but he'll be eligible, Sarah, to return after week 10. And I imagine that'll be good considering the Broncos should be coming off of a bye at that point in time. Things will be good for them. And I think that having him back if the Broncos can get things going offensively and the defense can still maintain its level of play and improve, you know, and be a little more consistent in run defense. Tell you what, they could get Randy Gregory back at one of the most crucial times of the season for the Broncos. Well, it's going to be just like we talked about back when the Broncos schedule initially released, right? A lot of people may be thinking, why well, Why can't Ray, Randy Gregory come back until week 10? It's only week five right now. I thought short-term injury reserve was only four weeks, right? Well, the reason being is that obviously here we are in week five, so he's got to be out weeks five, six, seven, eight, right? And then the Broncos don't play in week nine. So they have a bye week there after that London game against the Jaguars. So that's why we say week 10 he's eligible to come back so that kind of gives him that you know basically the maximum amount of time I know the injury report was initially two to six weeks right so that gives him five full weeks to heal up and get that knee right obviously after having the scope and everything like that but that's why we say week 10 and and like we mentioned and I was saying the schedule release that's really where the the meat of the Broncos schedule starts right they don't play the Chiefs until the second half of the season a lot of divisional matchups a matchup in Baltimore the second half of the season so the Titans the reigning number one seed in the AFC in the second half of the season. So obviously you've got a big stretch of games on that back half. It's going to be up to the depth right now, Cody, to really take advantage of this first half of the season. And no NFL game is easy. Like we get it. We saw it week one against Seattle. Everybody kind of penciled that in as a W for the Denver Broncos based on roster status and, you know, quality of players on the team and everything. But now you're you got an opportunity to get Randy Gregory back healthy for that second half stretch. And of course, you would rather have him for the full season. But can you really expect that anymore out of basically any player? I mean, everybody in the NFL is getting dinged up. Like we mentioned on yesterday's episodes, injuries are kind of just running rampant across the league right now. Thankfully, the Broncos don't have a game at the Meadowlands, Cody, because I know obviously that it's a death trap for those players that go out there. But, man, you, you, you love to see kind of just a, a solidified timeline for Randy Gregory. We kind of know when he's coming back for this team. Well, and obviously with the moves that the Broncos have made on Tuesday with Gregory going on IR, I know there are some other decisions. The activation clock, it doesn't appear that Michael Ojemudi or Greg Dulcich will come off of IR this week on a short week Thursday night football. Sarah, I think after Thursday night, we'll see the activation window kind of open up, and then they'll go from there, probably going into next week. And then, you know what, you get some reinforcements back because Justin Simmons will probably come off uh, injured reserve as well, which would be good because I think the expectation is he will be ready for Monday night football against Justin Hurts. Herbert and the Los Angeles Chargers. Now with the Murray signing becoming official now, I think there's a big question, right? Because we talk about the practice squad rules that the NFL set forth in the new CBA about how many times you can elevate and protect a guy. Well, Kendall Hinton's already been elevated from the practice squad to the active game day roster three times. That was the max allotment according to the new CBA. So now, Sarah, I think a bigger question is, do we see Kendall Hinton activated to the 53-man roster for the remainder of the season? Because now almost at this point, Any team can come and poach them if he wants to. And if he gets an opportunity to maybe go play a prominent role as a key receiver for another team, kind of like what Latavius Murray did. He had a choice to stay with New Orleans or go to the Denver Broncos. He chose to go to Denver for a better opportunity to get some playing time. I mean, Sarah, should the Broncos activate him to the 53-man roster going forward? 
It's going to be an interesting decision, isn't it? Because they've kind of given him that audition over the last three games to say, all right, are you going to be part of this rotation or are we going to have to go a different direction here? I think he's proven himself worthy, Cody. He's made a couple of clutch receptions. Obviously, Tyree Cleveland has not been able to stay healthy, even dating back to the early days of training camp. So you are you got a question mark there with Tyree Cleveland. You also got a question mark of whether or not, what what's the deal with Jalen Virgil? Like, why are the Broncos not at least just kind of throwing that dart and seeing what hits? So that all kind of leads to, yeah, Kendall Hinton probably should be promoted, at least for the time being, to see because you can't promote, you, you could promote him for this game against the Indianapolis Colts, but if you don't sign him to the 53, then you have to subject him to waivers after the game, and the Broncos don't want to risk losing a guy like that on waivers. He's obviously been an important part of the team. So to me, Cody, I think you do promote him. They do have an open spot on the roster right now with Randy Gregory obviously going to injured reserve alongside Javante Williams. Of course, the roster fluctuates all year. Some of these guys are short-term. Some of these guys are long-term. You also got to think about roster spots for, like you mentioned, Greg Dulcich and Michael Ojemudia going forward. So that's going to be the big question mark here. Or do the Broncos try to save Kendall Hinton on the practice squad, you know, protect him and, and keep him protected for as long as they can. But like you mentioned, at any point in time, in that small, short little window there, he could bolt for another team. So it's a big decision for George Payton to have to make. It doesn't seem very big on paper. A lot of people still think of Kendall Hinton for what he did in 2020, but he's making plays here in 2022, and the Broncos may need him at receiver. Well, I would say through the last two weeks, right, I'm Russell Wilson right now. i got my phone right here, okay? I've needed a big play on offense. I'm going to dial 1-800-KENDALL because that's exactly what he's done. Like, in key situations, the Broncos have needed a first down. He came up with two very big plays that influenced a scoring drive. We talk about the chemistry that Russ has had with Kendall Hinton as well. I imagine if Russ has any say, which, you know, George Payton, Nathaniel Hackett, they value a lot about what Russell Wilson has to say. I imagine we'll probably see Kendall Hinton called up and, and be on the active roster probably for the remainder of the season. And, and I think it's going to be a very interesting dynamic as to see like how everything plays out. But not to mention, he's also playing a key role on special teams for the Broncos. So, some interesting decisions, Sarah. Times like this, I do not envy George Payton and some of the tough decisions he has to make and some of the things that he has to navigate. You mentioned roster gymnastics right now this point of the season. I know it's four weeks in going into week five, but man... It's a tough thing to have to deal when you're, you know, overcoming injuries, things like that. It's, I don't envy him one bit. I don't either, Cody. And not to mention Justin Simmons coming back too. It's a, it's a whole shifting of everything. Like I mentioned, it's kind of like a D2 of the Mighty Ducks when all those players from the, you know, different states in the country, they come all, all around and they join District 5 and they form the super team. That's kind of what the Broncos roster is like right now. You got all these guys on injured reserve that are coming back to practice in the coming days. And all of a sudden, now you got to start making really tough decisions. So certainly don't envy George Payton, Nathaniel Hackett. But I think you're absolutely right. Russell Wilson's got to have some input as it pertains to wide receivers and tight ends, especially with Dulcich coming back. And now you got Kendall Hinton status in, you know, kind of a, a flux. So I think definitely you consult everybody. You consult your pro scouting department. Make sure that you're making the right calls here. And also considering special teams, like you mentioned, where Kendall Hinton's playing a big role. Mm, some interesting choices lie ahead for this Denver Broncos football team. But leading you up tomorrow, obviously it'll be a Locked On podcast. Now we're crossover Thursday as we sit down with Locked On Colts host Zach Hicks to preview Thursday's big game. Will Jonathan Taylor play? Can the Broncos overcome some of the injuries? And will we see Latavius Murray? Some of the storylines and headlines that we'll address in tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos.